Plus Gear back. And uh, thanks for waiting. Get ready for the Pokemon Sword Run Bike. It's episode two. The category will be Tower of Two Fists. Take it away and good luck. Thank you so much, and hello, uh, Game Over Cancer crowd. Uh, my name is Conception2. Uh, I'm excited to be able to showcase the uh, this specific run of uh, Pokemon uh, Sword, which is uh, the DLC run first. So uh, we actually have to start off with a very specific date and time here, which I'll get a little bit into in the run. So I'm going to uh, confirm that and get into the game now. Shout out to new Pokemon Snap coming out in a few days. I got it preloaded on the Switch. Hope you're all ready for that one. It's going to be fun um okay so i don't believe we had any uh incentives for this game so i'm just going to uh let's just call our character goc seems 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 good all right time is going to start as soon as i click yes here so get ready for uh the timer three two one go all right and promptly right away in the in the run we have about two and a half minutes of a cutscene. so welcome Pokemon Sword. Uh, this is the Sword version, um, and as mentioned uh, by Manix, we are running the category which is called Tower of Two Fists, uh, specifically the uh, Get Urshifu subcategory of that. So what that means is Tower of Two Fists is the first downloadable content for Pokemon Sword and Shield, which focuses on the Isle of Armor. Um, the Get Urshifu category is specific. It's kind of like a good ending versus a bad ending uh, situation. So Get Urshifu is the good ending. Uh, so we, we extend it a little bit longer uh, for that run. Um, worth noting as well, um, the this category has two uh, routes, two main ways of accomplishing it, um, which is to utilize Sobble mostly throughout until we get our Kubfu, or uh, the route I'm going to be doing is going to be using some Sobble, and then we're going to throw in some Nine Tails action, and then we're going to get to our Kubfu. Um, and the reason why I usually choose to run this route in marathons as opposed to the Sobble route, which is actually a little bit faster, is because the Nine Tails route is actually a little bit more marathon safe. Um, if we run all Sobble, we do have have to depend a little bit on what our Sobble stats are. Whereas in the Nine Tails route, even if we get a bad Vulpix, which is what we catch to make this happen, uh, we can just catch another Vulpix. We're gonna have a big patch in there and it's a significantly faster than resetting and going through a two minute cutscene uh, to reset our Sobble. So it's a little bit, little bit more entertaining that way. Plus it's more unique. We get to see more Pokemon. We get to see um, the route utilized in different ways. So it's, it's a lot more fun in a marathon setting in my opinion. Um, so, um, what makes this run really cool to me is that uh, we still start a fresh save file. So we're still starting from scratch here. We're not just using a pre-existing file and running into the DLC. We're still starting from scratch. We're gonna start all the way at the beginning. And then as soon as we can, we're gonna get over to the Isle of Armor. And that creates a lot of interesting situations for us because we put ourselves at a disadvantage doing that a little bit. Um, it makes it so that we don't have the bike. We don't have the ability to surf. We don't have the ability to fly. So it makes it so we have to get a little bit creative with our traveling options um, but you'll see how we uh, circumvent that system quite a bit but first of course we got to get through the hand holdiness that uh, Pokemon likes to give us which is a, a very basic tutorial like stuff rechanging our settings and all that um, so uh, once we gain control, which I promise is almost is almost here, <laughs> we're almost through the cutscene. Uh, we're gonna run a little bit towards grabbing our bag, and then we're actually gonna change the settings. Weirdly enough, I'm gonna, it only takes like uh, a few seconds, but I'm gonna actually focus on that part a little bit because I need to make sure all the settings are turned. Uh, settings that we're gonna change are things like turning off battle animations, turning off the ability to make nicknames, and turning off movies so it skips um, cinematic cutscenes and stuff like that. So now that we've gained control, I'm gonna run over here. And I'm going to change my settings real quick. Oops, see? That's what happens. There we go. All right, here we go. There we go. So uh, we also increase thing. We also increase tech speed. Oops, should grab the bag, huh? Uh, we also increase tech speed and things like that as well. A lot of options that are changed. Um, turn off swapping so we don't have the uh, option to change Pokemon after every Pokemon we defeat. Things like that. All basic stuff. If you've seen a Pokemon speed run, you've seen this a hundred times because every run does it. We just don't need all of those options. Um, we're going to head outside here. Uh, head on over to Hop's house and, and things like that. Um, if you're unfamiliar with uh, Pokemon Sword and Shield in general, uh, this is the eighth generation of Pokemon, by the way. 
Um, this takes place in the Galar region, which is kind of modeled after um, England slash parts of the UK. Um, so you'll get to see some fun influences there if you're in the EU crowd, which statistically you probably are because I'm in America, for example, and it is about 3 a.m. my time. So um, if you're up and awake and you're in America, you're up very late or up very early, depending on how you look at it. But in the EU, you're probably just up for the morning uh, like a normal person. So um, you'll get to see some fun influences there. Uh, first things first, we got to get through this beginning of the game stuff, uh, you know, meet our rival. In this case, it, it's Hop um, and Hop, get, Hop gets a lot of flack, I'll be honest. And uh, in, in a casual setting and, you know, his story arc for the whole story, which we're not going to really explore at all. I think Hop is actually a pretty cool rival, um, very unique as opposed to other games uh, from a, a speedrun perspective. Unfortunately, Hop is quite a bit annoying, um, and we'll, we'll get into the specifics of that when we actually get to fight Hop a couple times here. Um, but for now, head back out of Hop's house. Uh, we're actually going to go down this path in, uh, into another cutscene where we'll meet um, Hop's brother, Leon, who is the current Pokemon League champion. You know, got to get all that exposition out of the way. Um, worth mentioning, so uh, the three starters as well, Sobble, um, Grookey, and uh, what's the other one? Score Bunny. There you go. Uh, we will be choosing Sobble um, just because uh, Sobble's moveset is ideal for the early game. Um, originally, we were trying to utilize Grookey for this route as well at the very beginning when we were trying to route it out, but um, just did not have the early game firepower that we needed like our Sobble does. So we're still going to use our Sobble. If we were going to do the Sobble route, which is where we utilize Sobble almost the entire run until we don't need to anymore, um, we would need to ensure that we have a Sobble with a really good special attack, which if you're unfamiliar with how the mechanics of a Pokemon game work, um, special attack is the um, stat that is used for special type moves and uh, moves that are like, you know, for example, Sobble has a water gun, uh, which we utilize a lot. Water gun is a special type move as opposed to a physical move. And, you know, physical moves being, you know, think like punching, kicking, slashing, things of that nature are physical type moves, uh, which that those would use uh, attack as a space stat. But um, since we will primarily use water gun the entirety of the run we would need to make sure a special attack is high however since we don't use sobble for all that long just some early game trainers even if our special attack sucks it's not that big of a deal um, because we can just kind of manipulate through it. it might cost us an extra turn or two here and there but it, ultimately it doesn't make a difference but um it's worth it's worth doing that this way and doing the nine tails route. So like again, we don't have to reset for a good sobble should that be the case. Um, also unique to um, Gen Eight speedrunning for the first time ever. Um, if you're you know if you follow along with Pokemon at all, typically your rival will then pick the starter that um, is stronger against your starter. So for example, if I pick the water starter then he, uh, the rival would pick the grass starter to counteract it. In this game, however, our rival will actually pick the starter that is weaker to us. So we pick Sobble. Um, Hop is going to pick Score Bunny, um, which does give us a little bit um, of speed up top because we can defeat Score Bunny rather easily. So um, also unique from a speedrunning perspective. Uh, shout out to this picnic. Looks absolutely delicious. Could go for a kebab myself right now. Um, also, would love to pose this for the group, for all all y'all watching, supporting Game Over Cancer um, and supporting this excellent cause. This is going to be what I call an unofficial bid war of sorts. All right. So stick with me uh, a little less than an hour into this run. We're going to be given a choice and that choice will be to choose Bulbasaur or Squirtle. I'm not going to really elaborate more. We have to choose Bulbasaur or Squirtle. I will choose Squirtle most likely unless you know, we get a lot of donations in favor of Bulbasaur or something. Now, this this isn't going to be tracked or anything, but if we get a, a loud vocal support, I'll do Bulbasaur instead. But, you know, Squirtle Squad right here. Look at the camera. You know, Squirtle Squad's in force. Uh, but here we are. We are in our first fight uh, with Hop. 
Pop does have two Pokemon, which makes it a little bit longer. Uh, throws out Wooloo first, which we are just going to uh, pound. Typically only takes three pounds, um, unless we get crits or something like that. Can take four if our attack is especially low. So uh, let's see how we do. We still got the three, so that's good. Um, luckily enough for us, as soon as we level up to six, we get Water Gun. So uh, that's really good. And our, by the way, our special attack is middling. It's not great, but it's not terrible. Um, depending on you know how we progress further here. So we get to see now why Hop can be a little annoying. Things like this. So Hop loves to interject with flavor text when certain things happen. For example, if you use a super effective move, um, he always loves to throw in some flavor text about type advantages. Um, and things like that. If you crit, like I just did, which it was useless by the way, so um, this doesn't save us time, it loses us time. Um, not only with the, a critical hit special text, but because Hop also gives us some flavor text about critting as well. Um, it makes it, you know, ever, even that much more slow. Uh, so hop, that's why Hop is annoying from a speedrunning perspective. The good news is that that was the completion of the first Hop fight, and we only have to fight Hop one more time, so we don't have to worry. We don't have to uh, worry about it too too much. Um, great. So um, Hop is complete. We're going to continue on a little bit here, but we do have kind of a what I kind of call like an extended interactive cutscene here. So we're going to be going over here into the woods. Um, what's going to happen in these woods? is we are going to hit three encounters and it's going to be a squovit a rookie d and a squovit it's always the same what is different is their stats um so it, it doesn't matter from a fighting perspective because we're going to run away from all three of them we don't need the experience we don't need to catch them anything like that um the only thing that could save us time is the rookie d the second encounter we get um some rookie have an ability called unnerve um, which uh, is an ability that will always pop up at the beginning of the fight that says that you can't use berries. Um, if we get a rookie D that does not have unnerve, it saves us about a second because we don't have to endure that text that pops up on the screen. Uh, so just a fun little fact there. But like I said, these always pop up. They always are in roughly the same location. They just vary in stats and things like that. So squove it. And then here's the rookie D. Let's see if we get that free second of time save. Let's see. Come on. Let's get that good luck. Yeah. Free second of time save. No unnerve. Let's go. The run is blessed. <laughs> um, awesome. So uh, here we are traveling through um, the woods. Uh, one more uh, encounter. And then right after this, we have really what is just an interactive cutscene where we're going to encounter one of the legendaries of the game. And it's going to put us into a battle with it. And I, I, if I weren't holding a controller, I would do that in quotes because it's not a battle. All that's going to happen is uh, we're going to use pound three times and the screen will get progressively more and more foggy until it turns all white. And then we're going to leave the forest. It's just like it's, it's just a cutscene. So we got quite a little bit of time here while that happens. If there is anything that we'd like to mention in terms of donations, plugs, incentives, anything we got going on, um, yeah, we got we got a minute or two for that. Sure thing. We don't have any donations currently, but I do want to mention that since you gave us the option of picking Squirtle or Bulbasaur, we're going to see if we can try to actually throw in an actual incentive. Oh, OK. Um, so uh, I'll keep you updated on that. I'm still uh, working in the back end for that. But uh, yeah, you got me curious. So I decided to pull some strings. Well, that was yeah. not my intention. I did not mean to make extra work for y'all, but I just wanted to make it a little bit, little bit more interesting if we could. Um, so apologies yeah. that added uh, added a little extra work to your, to your plate there. No, no, that's no work at all. We're all for fun. Um, but yeah, I'll let you know for sure if we put it up. But if not, uh, we'll, we'll work something out. Okay, we'll, well, we'll, we'll scream in the chat like you told us. <laughs> yeah, scream in the chat. Um, you know, like I said, show, show us with your donations. A dollar is great. You know, everything counts towards, uh, you know, get, get raising money for cancer research and cancer prevention and everything we can do to, to help out. So, um, and if you'd like to, you know, shout out your favorite Pokemon, shout out if you want Bulbasaur or Squirtle, shout out whatever you want, your cancer experiences, whatever the case may be. Uh, we're happy to hear them. We're happy to react to them. So... Um, if you have it, if you're able, uh, go ahead and support. Um, 
as mentioned again we were in a an interactive cutscene with that uh, legendary uh we will regain consciousness here um and then it starts to open up a little bit more we get a little bit more freedom but uh unfortunately the run is very heavy in cutscenes and exposition at the top um but we will it will open up and we'll get to some more unique um strategies coming up here soon uh, shout out to uh, Leon's Charizard, by the way. Uh, Charizard's always got to make an appearance. If it's a Pokemon game, there's got to be a Charizard. So we'd love to see it. Uh, one key thing here that's very easy for um, especially newer runners to do is they can forget to talk to mom and try to progress the story without it. And you'll get stopped and say, hey, did you go talk to your mom? You have to walk all the way back. So always remember, if you're going to leave home for an extended period of time, tell your mom. It's simple. Um, all right, so now we are getting ready to do a little bit of actual Pokemon fun here. So we're going to head over to Route 1, and we have a little bit of tech. So what we're looking for on Route 1 is we're going to be catching a Pokemon. We prefer it's a Wooloo, and even further, we prefer it's a level 5 or 6 Wooloo. The reason why is if it's a level 5 or 6 Wooloo specifically, we'll actually level up, because in this game, uh, you get experience from not only defeating Pokemon, but also catching Pokemon. Uh, so Something that they added and adapted from you know pokemon go and the let's go series and, and more recent generations so um level eight would make it so that the coming trainers would go a lot faster um we got a level six so that's great news um <laughs> i have been getting bad luck when i get a high level wooloo that they like to break out of the ball let's see let's go run is blessed all right, so now we are, our uh, Sobble's gonna be level eight, uh, which obviously is gonna give us that stat boost and everything like that. The other thing that this accomplishes, it's not only to give us stats and, and to do it for fun, it also skips a catch tutorial that would happen on route two by Leon, but because the game reads that we've already caught a Pokemon, it determines that we don't need to see a catch tutorial, rightly so, as we've already caught Pokemon. So um, that's that's a very key piece of speed tech, not only for leveling, but for, uh, you know, cutscene skips and things of that nature. Um, speaking of cutscenes, we have another one here uh, where we meet um, the professor of the region's assistant, Sonia, who's going to hook us up with our first Pokedex. Um, shout out to Yamper who is a Gen 8 Pokemon, Electric Corgi. Couldn't be cuter if I thought, if I could think of it myself. Um, but I'm a little biased because I am a personally a big time Pokemon dog fan. My favorite Pokemon is Arcanine. I want to someday like play a Pokemon game, just have an all dog team, you know, that that's that's my jam. So uh, Yamper uh, really strikes a chord with me in particular. But also, I mean, what's not to love? Just adorable. Um, one thing we are going to do is after this, we're actually going to be approached by an NPC who's going to give us some potions, which is actually really good because we might have to use one or two early on in the game before we buy some extra. Uh, so that's very useful. But even after that, when we regain control, we're actually going to pick up a useful, potentially useful item, I should say, because we might not even use it, but we might have to depending on uh, some RNG in the late game. So here's this NPC. Gonna hook us up with the potions. Again, we appreciate it. Thank you, good sir. You didn't have to do that. You don't even know us, but you know, that's nice. Um, then we're gonna go over in the swirly grass to our right, and we're gonna pick up this item, which is a rare candy. We'll get into a little bit about why we might need to use that later on, way later on, uh, not yet, but coming up soon. Then um, some more, you know, tutorial type stuff where Hop tries to explain to us what a Pokemon Center is. Um, you know, if you don't know what a Pokemon Center is at this point, I uh, I don't know what to tell you. But luckily enough, we can actually skip some of the dialogue here. And we need to come in here anyway. So. It's not all bad. So Hop's going to leave. We're actually going to run over the PC here. And we're going to deposit that Wooloo we caught because we don't need it. Great. And then we're actually going to make a pit stop over here at this uh, vendor. Oops. 
wrong berries and grab we're gonna grab three pekka berries um if you're unfamiliar pekka berries um are berries that heal poison uh which we'll get into a little bit as to why that will be important later on once we get into more details about what the dlc is and what it involves um for now we're still in the base game we're still in like the um beginning of the base game we have not yet touched upon any dlc content but it'll be pretty clear as to when we switch over um here we go, we meet Hop here too, and then Leon comes and joins us as well. This is where that catch tutorial would happen had we not already caught something. So we're saving time. And then, yeah, we and then we get to uh, walk through some grass. Now, if you played Pokemon games in the past, uh, several older generations, even some of the newer generations, um, typically how Pokemon grass works is you walk through grass, um every so often you'll be randomly encountered with a pokemon um this game takes a page out of let's go's book um and you can see pokemon that pops up in the grass which um you know regardless of how you feel about how that impacts the series as a whole is great for speedrunners because typically in pokemon speedruns to avoid encounters that we don't need we typically have to buy a lot of repels and things like that to make sure pokemon don't bother us but since we can see everything that pops up pokemon wise we just dodge them, which is great. Um, here we have our first. Um, I want to say I don't want to say wild trainer because it makes it sound like this kid lives in the wilderness or something, but, which he doesn't. But like our first trainer that we encounter, that's not hop, basically. Ooh, that's bad luck. So typically, um, yeah, I thought based off of what our special attack is, that would be fine. Typically, when we are level eight, we can actually two shot this Squovit. Um, but it looked like I got a good roll on the first um, water gun and a bad roll on the second. Uh, and whenever I say roll, that is because whenever you use any move that damages, you actually have uh, 16 different possible um, options uh, for damage. Now, they're not all different values, so it's not like 1 through 16 or something like that. You know, you might have, you know, options 1 through 5 might be. 10 damage and 6 through 12 might be 6 damage, you know, uh, 12 damage or stuff like that. But um, 16 different values of damage. Um, so when I say roll, a low roll, that means it's probably a low, lower range, high roll, upper range. Um, you might have noticed as well, there was another trainer there. We just, you know, circumvent by walking around the rock. You know, we got to go fast here. Um, and then we ha fight our second trainer on Route 2 here, who has two Pokemon, Blitbug and uh, Nicket. Blip bug is particularly annoying because it will always use struggle bug and struggle bug is a move that lowers our special attack. So it automatically makes our moves a little bit weaker, which is unfortunate, but you know, nothing we can't overcome. Um, and then we take out Nicket based on my special attack. It looks like this Nicket is going to have to take four shots to kill. If I had to guess, maybe we could do it in three. That was a high roll. So let's see. Can we do it in three? Thanks, game. Okay, so that was pretty good. So we just have one extra turn between the two fights, which is not overly bad. We'll take that. And then uh, this house straight in front of us, as you can see, Hop, is actually the professor of the region, who's uh, Professor Magnolia, I believe. Magnolia, sounds right. Um, so we're going to have a little bit more exposition, a little bit more dialogue here, and then we're going to gear up for our second fight with Hop. Um, we have, uh, you know, like a, a, at least a, a good 30 or so seconds. Any plugs that we happen to have, Manix, in, in that 30 second time? Nothing yet, but I was going to ask you uh, how annoying is Quick Attack in the speedrun? Because I guess Quick Attack, if it's like before, basically outspeeds anything. So that must be annoying for a speedrunner. It, so it, it certainly can be um, in, in Pokemon speedrunning as a whole. Luckily, if I'm trying to think off the top of my head, but I think that Nicket that we just fought is the only Pokemon in this run that utilizes Quick Attack that I can think of, or at least the only Pokemon that has the AI to use it. Um, I can't think of anything else off the top of my head, actually. Um, at least it's a fast animation. Yeah, it's a fast, and especially since we turn off animations, it's re relatively quick. Um, that Nicket, um, like, it's not surprising to see that Nicket use Quick Attack every turn. Uh, what I always like to focus on to see is if if that Quick Attack gets used on the last turn, that it would die, uh, because then it extends the fight by half turn at least. So, uh, we, I don't like to see that if I can avoid it, but um, you know, Nicket loves to use Quick Attack. Um, this fight with Hop, by the way. 
absolutely simple. We water gun to win. Um, but there are a few things that can affect how long this fight takes that are outside of our control. Um, useless crits is always a, a thing that ha can happen. Um, meaning we get a critical on a hit that would have already killed anyway. So then we're gonna get not only, again, that critical hit text, but some extra annoying flavor text. Um, our special attack must be really bad, actually, because almost always at this level, you're gonna two shot that Wulu, um, but we had to three shot it. So either we got pitiful rolls for both or our special attack is junk. It doesn't look particularly good. Um, score bunny. So typically we'll take two hits. The turn that score bunny gets, can you use Tackle or Ember? We really don't want to see Ember because it has flavor text. We got Ember, of course. So, yeah, anytime he's about to use Ember, he says, it's half a taste of true power. Our flames are burning bright. Uh, <laughs> text line. If he was going to use Tackle, he wouldn't have said anything. Um, so maybe the run isn't so blessed, but we're trying. <laughs> um, and then third Pokemon that uh, Hop's going to throw out is a Rookie D, which is of no consequence to us. Unfortunately, this rookie D will always have unnerve, so it does, it's not like we could save time on that text anyway. Um, if we had crit the score bunny or rookie D on the first attack, we would have one shot at it, which actually would have been helpful, but no, no such luck. All right. So, but that is the last time that we're going to fight Hop in this run. If we were doing an any percent run of this game, we'd fight Hop like, I don't know, like seven more times, something like that. If I had to guess, I don't know. I've never counted, um, but it's a lot more times um, like we do. But that's it. We're done with Hop. So that's great. Um, we just have another um, extended cutscene here where we're going to get um, see some stuff fall out of the sky. We're going to get um, a Dynamax band, which if you're unfamiliar uh, with this generation, that is this uh, generation's kind of gimmick boo, for lack of a better term. Um, Dynamaxing, which basically like makes your Pokemon really big um, and, you know, gives it, you know, heavy attack power and stuff like that. Um, if you are a fan of Dynamax and good news for you, we will use it once in this run. Uh, just the once though, just the once. Um, but you know, it is cool to see. Um, and then, yeah, just more exposition. One thing I will note as well, which you might've, you know, thought about a little bit, you know, I fought those two trainers before I went into hop, but I, you know, I came into this hop fight full health and that was because in this early game a lot, there's just a lot of free heals. We get a lot of free heals in the early game for some reason. Um, so that is really also helpful from a speedrunning perspective because, you know, it's a lot easier to plan around free heals as opposed to, do I need to take a center? Do I need to buy potions to heal out of this? Do I need to, you know, replenish my power points for any move um, and things like that? So that's really nice that the game decided to do that for us. Um, after we get through these cutscenes, um, we're going to walk back um, into Wedgehurst, which is the town we were at before. Um, and then we're going to actually hop on the train, make our way over to the wild area, which um, as opposed to having every city separate with, you know, um, huge routes in between them, um, there is a large wild area kind of in the center of everything um, that you can catch a lot of Pokemon of varying levels. Uh, which is a pretty cool concept, in my opinion. I think it's pretty cool. Um, the game also does have routes that you can catch Pokemon at as well. So it kind of blends the two concepts, which I think is, is pretty unique. Um, but once we get into the wild area, we get to ha we get to have some fun and do some um, abnormal things um, to go fast, which I, I really enjoy. Uh, but first, we have time go ahead. Before you go wild. Oh, yeah, yeah. We got plenty of time. Go for it. Ultima Aura dropped $10 and four cents that would be us dollars and says bubba boy squad so now we got some curious bulbs or uh okay choosers. so bulbasaur is in the lead so for those of you who are just joining us conception said for fun uh if you want to throw some donations towards squirtle or bulbasaur choice about halfway into the run he's going to make a choice no spoilers as to what happens but you're free to make him choose who's going to take and what happens so uh with that, Bulbasaur's in the lead. 
Go team Bulba. Yeah. Okay. Go team Bulba. Go team Bulba. Okay. Now I'm a I'm a I'm a big fan of Gen One. Gen One is my favorite Gen. I can acknowledge it's probably not the best Gen, but it's my favorite one, um, mainly for nostalgia purposes. So I really love all three of the uh, Gen One starters. But uh, Bulba Gang is coming through. You know, my Squirrel Squad could show up as well. I'm not going to complain. You know. So. Uh, yeah, let's see. We'll see if we'll see if we get any more donations uh, towards this just for fun incentive. Um, I'm gonna bite my lip and wait. <laughs> yeah, we still got time. Like I said, it's about a little less than an hour through the run. I would say is when we'll have to make that de decision, like for the fifty-five minute mark or so. I think, depending yeah, on how things go. Be just about half an hour, give or take. Mm-hmm. Yeah, give or take. Uh, there will be some RNG elements in there as well, so it's going to be really give or take. Um, we haven't had to encounter too much RNG yet, besides a little bit of the fights. So, uh, but RNG, this is a heavily influenced RNG run. It's just a lot in the middle and end of the game. Um, but uh, you, you, you'll see exactly what I mean a little bit later on. So uh, we're about to be in the wild area. Um, if I were doing the Sobble route, this would be this where we start uh, diverging paths very quickly. Um, so you saw when I at the very beginning of the run, when I first got started, I had to set the date and time to a very specific time. And that is to manipulate some stuff starting here. Um, so setting the date and time for when it is gives us a specific weather pattern. Um, the weather pattern that we're going to get is drought. Uh, which is very hot and dry, which is great because if you recall, the Pokemon that we're going to be focusing on in the mid game here is Nine Tails. So not only does that is this going to create a spawn of Vulpixes for us to choose from, um, it's also going to boost the effect of uh, Fire type moves, uh, which is as you can see will be uh, pretty useful going forward. Another divergence there here that would occur between the Sobble route is the first thing we're going to do when we regain control is we're going to walk towards an onyx that's just to our left as we as we start walking. If we were doing the Sobble route, we would be banking on trying to kill this onyx for a lot of experience. Because of doing the Nine Tails route, I want this onyx to kill me as fast as possible. Um, and that is because we're going to be utilizing this onyx for a death warp. Um, so uh, hopefully, so the Onyx has two moves that attack and two moves that don't. Rock Slide is the one we want. Curse is not at all what we want. Don't do Curse. Uh, the other move it has is Dragon Breath, but that does take two shots to kill unless we get cr uh, crit on. Stop using Curse, Onyx, please. Just kill me. And you, of course, you know, depending on which route you do, you always get the option that you don't want. Like if I wanted to kill this Onyx right now, you know, I would have got one shot at turn one. You know how it goes. Uh, that's how it that how, that's how it always goes. Of course, we got um, Dragon Breath here, so we still need to get another shot. Oh, good! I crit on him. Terrific! Can you please just do do the thing, Onyx? Onyx, please. Oh, brutal! See, so I told you, RNG RNG takes place in the middle of the game here, starting here. This is uh, particularly bad. Again, want to reiterate, has, it's 50-50. There's Rock Slide. Rock Slide is what we want because Rock Slide would have one-shot us, but it's also not a 100% accurate move. Um, you know, a casual 10-turn fight that could be done in one turn. Gotta love Pokemon RNG. Okay, so we die here. Now, this NPC asks, heals us up for one, and then asks us, because we died, do you want, she just says, do you want me just to teleport you to the gate of the next town? Which is great, because that saves us walking the entire length of the wild area. Now, because that fight was so terrible, it's probably uh, hit or miss as to whether or not I even saved time on that. You know, might, it might have been better off walking at that point. Um, but, you know, even when I get a bad Onyx fight, usually it only takes like, you know, three, four, five turns, not ten turns like it just took. Um, but you know what I say? I say that Onyx knew that I was doing a marathon that was raising money to uh, help prevent cancer and provide money to cancer research, and it wanted to extend it even further. So to that, I say thank you, Onyx. Um, the reason why we want to warp over here, by the way, is we need to get this Pokeball that's straight ahead of us. And this Pokeball contains a Firestone. And if you're unfamiliar, Vulpix evolves into Ninetales via a Firestone. So that's why we're going to use it. 
And then we're going to take another Death Warp and we're going to opt to use this Rhyhorn. Uh, the Delcaddies that are also in there are pretty bad. I would have also taken a Skorupi, um, had it popped up, but uh, Rhyhorn's a good option. The only reason why I don't love using Rhyhorn over Skorupi is that sometimes the Rhyhorns can be slower than us because they're, you know, big bulky Pokemon. But luckily we got one shot and it was faster. So that worked out. And then this time we warp back here again, but we're not going to, we're, this time when she says, do you want me to take you to the next town? We're gonna say no, so we stay here. And then we're going to venture off into the grass to catch a Vulpix. Now, um, these grassy areas have Vulpix that range between level seven and 10. Uh, we cannot take a level seven, it's too low. And we need to have a Vulpix with specific stats. Specifically, we need good special attack and speed. So I will catch a Vulpix. If it has bad stats, I'll have to catch another one. Uh, or if it could be level seven, obviously can't use it. We're just gonna straight up run. Um, the, but like I said, the good thing about this is as opposed to having to reset, you know, for a Sobble, there's just Vulpix abound. I can run, I can recatch, I can do whatever I need to do. Okay, great. So this one's level nine, which we can take. So we're going to just weaken it one shot just to make the catch a little easier. And then we're going to catch it. And then at level nine, I actually have a table of stats here that I'm going to compare against. So at level nine, we're hoping to see at least 14 special attack and at least 16 speed. Now, if it, we could take 13 special attack and 15 speed if it comes to it, but I'd rather not. Um, if I have both, then I definitely won't. If I have one or the other, I'll probably risk it. Um, but let's see what we get. All right, so special attack is 15. That's great. Speed is 19, which is great. This is actually a really good Vulpix. Okay, wonderful. Um, so we're going to swap it to the top. We're going to go into our bag. Uh, we're going to use the Firestone. We're going to evolve it. Perfect. This is actually a really good one. So can't complain too much. Um, now, one thing that I, I skipped over a little bit um, was that you might have noticed that I was able to go into my PC from my menu, which is a kind of a new skill to do. Um, not used to seeing that in Pokemon games. Um, but that is, yeah, that is a new thing that is added to this generation called the box link, which means that you can act now that I have it, I can access my PC from anywhere, which is a very useful skill because we do some strategic swapping um, and depositing whenever we need to catch things and, and things like that. Uh, we're going to head over to this. Um, what is it called? Shedinja? Is, this, is that what it's called? Nope. Ninjask. I, I wrong, wrong ninja based Pokemon. Um, and then we're going to fight this for some experience. Um, the reason why we fight this Ninjask, obviously it's a bug type, so we have the type advantage, which is helpful. Not only that, um, this Ninjask only has a few moves that do damage to us. It's a higher level and those damaging moves are pretty low damage. Uh, so um, we get a fat amount of experience from it and with little risk. So that's basically what we do. Um, and because our special attack is really solid, uh, we two shot it, which is great. We could sometimes have to three shot it. I think you could even get as bad as a four shot, depending on if you get a low level Vulpix. Um, but four shot is very rare if it happens at all. Three shot is somewhat common. Two shot is pretty good. Um, but now we're, we're actually done in this wild area for now. We're going to make our way back up and we're actually going to take the train back to Wedgehurst uh, for two reasons. One. Uh, we're actually just about done with our base game exploration. We're actually going to make our way over to the Isle of Armor very soon. But we do have to do one pit stop and back in Wedgehurst first. Um, and you might be wondering, why why do we have to return to Wedgehurst and do something uh, when we, could, we were already there? Why didn't we just do it there the first time? And that is because this is very specific to um, Ninetales. Also wanted to shout out this train worker here who has train track sideburns. Um, that is job dedication if I've ever heard it. Uh, so shout out to that person who must really love their job at the train station. Um, but I, I digress. Uh, we're going to run back to the Pokemon Center here, and we're actually going to talk to the vendor that's all the way on the left. Uh, Gen 8 has this very cool feature where uh, you can talk to somebody in any Pokemon. Oop, not the right nickname. That's not what I care about. <laughs> Oops, it ate my input. Um, remember a move. Um, so you can talk to this vendor, and no matter what level your Pokemon is, you can actually learn anything from its move set from any level at any time. So, for example, if I wanted to learn Flamethrower, but Ninetales doesn't learn Flamethrower to say like 30 something, I don't need to wait for Ninetales to be level 30. I can just go to this person and learn, nine, uh, learn Flamethrower from them which is great because that means my level 11 nine tails can have an absolutely 
gorgeous move set right away. I just have to go talk to the person to get the moves. Uh, also, it's free, so it's it's pretty overpowered, um, if I'm being honest. Um, but I'm not complaining. Uh, one more move here. So the moves that we are teaching are Nine Tails, are Nasty Plot, Flamethrower, Safeguard, and Fire Blast. Uh, Flamethrower and Fire Blast, I'd like to imagine, are pretty self-explanatory. You know, high damaging fire type moves make sense. Nasty Plot is a move that heavily raises our special attack, which as you can imagine is also very useful for us as fire type moves are special attack moves. And finally, Safeguard, which is a move that when you use it, uh, you, you are given a free five turns that prevent status changes, meaning I can't be poisoned or confused or put to sleep, you know, yada, yada, yada. So that's gonna be useful for a couple key fights. Um, as an introduction to the Isle of Armor, oh no. Uh, as an introduction to the Isle of Armor, the reason why I said oh no is because I talked to that Slowpoke from the side. When that happens, you have to wait for him to turn, uh, which as you can imagine, a Slowpoke is pretty slow, uh, but it's fine. It wastes like a, two seconds or something. Um, our introduction to uh, the Isle of Armor is is this Slowpoke. So um, we can't defeat the Slowpoke, we have to catch it. However, this game and I think other uh, later generations have a unique challenge in place that if a Pokemon is a higher level than you, it, it significantly makes it harder to catch. Um, so we can't use Ninetales to catch it because our Ninetales is level 11, the Slowpoke is level 12. Obviously that's going to be difficult. However, our Sobble is level 12. So we're going to swap to Sobble here and catch the Slowpoke, hopefully on the first ball. Good. Very good. Um, so that's, that's what we do. We weaken it with Ninetales, swap to Sobble, catch the Slowpoke. So that's a little bit of strategy there. Um, ha should we cho have chosen to do the Sobble route, we wouldn't have a Ninetales here, obviously. We would just have Sobble um, at, a, at a higher level than he is now. But we would have bought a Quick Ball from a vendor, and we would have just thrown the Quick Ball right away. Um, so, you know, there's give and take there. Obviously, we would have had to waste time to go to the vendor to get the Quick Ball in the first place. But the Quick Ball does catch the Slowpoke almost consistently without having to weaken it, which is great. All right, and guess what? We are on to the Isle of Armor. Say goodbye, base game. We're in DLC territory now. I'll also say, you might have seen there as well, there was another NPC there that was hanging out with who I like to call um, track burns, you know, train track sideburns, which is um, Clara. Now, Clara is going to become our de facto rival for this DLC and instead of Hop. Interesting point of note, I am playing on the sword version. Sword is what has Clara. If you played this on the shield version, has a completely different uh, rival named Avery. Um, the difference is being Clara is a poison type specialist and Avery is a psychic type specialist. So they each have their unique challenges, of course. Um, so we're going to menu here, hop in our box and we're going to deposit both Sobble, oops, uh, Sobble and Slowpoke because we don't need them. I'm trying to, please. Please, okay, fine, we're just gonna do it solo. I don't know why that that gave me such trouble. There we go. Um, and then we're also, while we're here, we're just gonna hop in our bag really quick and go over to our berries and equip a cherry berry. Now, uh, cherry berry, if you're unfamiliar, is a berry that prevents or heals paralysis, uh, which will not matter for this first fight, which we're gonna fight Clara for the first time in, a, in just a second, but it will matter for the fight after that. Um, and just to save a menu, instead of having a menu twice, I'm just gonna do it now because it doesn't particularly matter. Um, there's nothing Clara could do to paralyze us, so it's not like the berry is gonna get used in any regard um, anyway. Um, so Clara's gonna head out. Be right before we fight off Clara, though, we are going to quickly hop into the train vendor here um, and just buy some potions and some awakenings, which will be useful. Well, hopefully they won't be useful, <laughs> if, if I'm being honest, because we don't want to be put to sleep. But uh, there's a high likelihood that we do, so we might have to use them at some point. Um, and potions are obviously self-explanatory. So here we are. This is the Isle of Armor. Uh, the first DLC. And like I said, we're going to kick it off with a fight for a fight against Clara here. Um, and this fight is relatively, um, relatively not a problem. The only time that this fight can be a problem is if one, your special attack is a little suspect and uh, simultaneously with that, if your health is low, um, then it can be a little bit of a problem. 
but neither um, of those problems are what we're going to have right now. Health is high, and I know our special attack is good. Um, one thing that can be annoying is if we get poisoned here, uh, which it doesn't look like we did, and unless the poison comes after the cutscene. Hold on. Okay, no, we're good. Um, so we nasty plot to buff our special attack up by one. Uh, Ventipede is a bug type, so Flamethrower is going to take it out pretty easily anyway. Um, next Pokemon that she throws out is Slowpoke. And I will mention this as well. Uh, the Slowpoke that she uses is a Galarian Slowpoke. So you might be wondering, oh, aren't, aren't we a, a little bit worried because Slowpoke is a water type? But a Galarian Slowpoke actually is Poison Psychic. It's not water type. Um, so Flamethrower um, works just fine, actually. But I appreciate your concern. Okay, so that's our first Clara fight down. Perfect. Uh, we, um, spoiler alert, we're going to fight Clara two more times in this run, actually. Um, the second fight is pretty easy. Third fight is atrocious, but we'll get a little bit more into both of those as we get closer. We have time for a chat question. Oh, of course. Uh, Mivu would like to ask, are enemies Pokemon's levels relative to yours or are they set? That is a great question, especially because the DLCs in this game are very unique in that regard. So because we're doing the DLC early before we do anything, area Pokemon as well as the Pokemon of the NPCs and trainers are going to be relatively low. So they are set, but they're low. Um, so they're manageable for us. However, we can do the DLC later on in the game. You know, like after we beat you at any point, you can do the DLC really. So you could do it mid game, end game, uh, close to the end game, whatever you want to do it. Whoops. Um, in the, in those cases, the Pokemon uh, area, Pokemon, as well as the NPC Pokemon are going to have significantly higher levels. Um, so that makes it, you know, just a little bit different for that. For example, area Pokemon in the grass can be like level 10 to 15 for me, but, um, if you go, come back in the end game, they're all going to be like level 60 and stuff like that. So um, it just depends on when you choose to tackle the DLC. But since we tackle it early, they're all going to be relatively low. And they are, uh, in fact, set. Great question, though. Um, Where does that provide once you hit the area kind of thing? <laughs> exactly. So as soon as we cross over into the Isle of Armor, it, the game reads where we're at progress wise, determines the level of the area. Um, so that gets taken care of. Um, this is the dojo, by the way, in front of us. So the Isle of Armor, the main story involves this dojo and uh, us moving up the ranks through it. So we're going to enter the dojo, become part of the dojo. And um, the main quest of this DLC is basically accomplishing three tasks in this dojo in order to claim what is called the Armor of the Island. As you can imagine, Isle of Armor, Armor of the Island, it kind of makes makes sense. Um, you'll get to see what that armor is in a little bit. So, But first, of course, we have to claim the three challenges. We have to complete them. Um, but even before we get into the three challenges, we have another fight that we have to do, which is going to be against the Dojo Master. The Dojo Master's name is Mustard, just like the condiment. Um, uh, we're going to fight Mustard. Mostly, it usually goes to plan like the fight is mainly scripted but it can go a little bit off the rails depending on some rng elements usually it's the same exact pattern um it can be a little wee bit scary only because um we do have to depend on using fire blast at one point and why that why that's scary is fire blast is not a 100 accurate move it is i believe an 85 percent accurate move so that means it has a 15 percent chance to miss if that fire blast miss misses we are dead so um hopefully it doesn't miss is what we'll say the good side to that is if it misses and i die we just reset in this dojo so i'm, I'm not going to save or anything you might think well why don't you save for this but even if i die i'm just going to come right back to here so it's not like it, it wastes any anything but this fight against Mustard, first of all, shout out to Mustard's eyebrows, by the way, goes past his chin. Always love pointing that out. Uh, very fun design. Um, but this fight almost always goes according to plan. So what is gonna, I'm going to use Nasty Plot first. Typically, this mean Fu will then use, what's it called? Fake Out, I think, which will then cause me to flinch. And then I'll have to use Nasty Plot again, which is fine. This is all normal. Yep, Fake Out. I'll flinch. Yep, I'll have to use Nasty Plot again. Then uh, it'll use Force Palm, which could paralyze me, which is why we equipped the uh, berry, and it didn't, which is great. It did paralyze me, but we had the berry equipped, which is fine. 
Um, and then we have to hope for that fire blast hit, which we got. So uh, now this fight is free. We're not worried anymore. Um, but, uh, and then the second Pokemon that Mustard has is a Shinx, which just goes down in one flamethrower, so no problem. So, um, yeah, that this fight went pretty much as it always goes. Wabam. All right, and that is and that is Mustard. Um, spoiler alert, we will fight Mustard one more time as well. So we this is not the last we'll see of those eyebrows. When's Relish and Ketchup? <laughs> uh, those are later DLCs, of course. You know, those are downloadable characters. You got to get the fighter pack, you know. Ah <laughs> uh, no, I wish there was a ketchup and relish, but there is nothing. <laughs> Just muster. Just a quick mention: that there's maybe about five minutes left if you want to change this to a Squirtle pick. Yeah, that's about right, I'd say. Um, so basically just to give context, so you have an idea of when the, this is going to close. So we're, we got our dojo outfit here. Mustard is going to introduce us to the first challenge. We're going to complete the first challenge. And when we return our prize for completing the first challenge is either a Bulbasaur or a Squirtle. We get to choose. So, uh, that after we complete the first challenge is a lot, the last times that we're going to have any, any say in that. Um, so the first challenge, let's go into a little bit what, what these challenges are. So Claire is upset because we all got these cool dojo uniforms and she didn't. So she just gets one. However, they were just stolen. They're stolen by who? Let's take a look. Slow pokes. That looked awful fast for a slow poke, didn't it? Looked a little, looked a little quick. Well, uh, take a look at these slow pokes. All right. These aren't slow pokes. Okay. These are fast pokes. These slow pokes are schmoovin and our challenge is that we're going to have to go hunt down these three slowpokes who have all stolen a, a piece of Clara's outfit and defeat them. And that is the first challenge. Um, the slowpokes are going to be residing in what is essentially the wild area of the uh, DLC, uh, the Swamplands. And they're all look, luckily they're all in the same place, so uh, we don't have to worry too much. Uh, before we even get started, it's going to ask us if we want to change clothes, which is faster to say no. So we're going to say no. And then we're going to just heal really quickly because we're somewhat low health. Great. All right. So now we're going to head out. And we're going to get to see some more nifty fast poke movement here. Does the outfit do anything? Alpha doesn't do anything all aesthetic. Um, I actually think it, it does look pretty cool, honestly. So I, I'm not against the outfit, but it's just all aesthetic. Um, just a way to customize your character. Um, so great. Let's go catch some slow pokes. Um, and this is oh, this would be another uh, route divergence as well a little bit. Um, so this split um, is actually significantly faster when you use the nine tails over the um, Sobble. And the reason why is that the Sobble here would actually have some extra items that we need to buy from a berry bender outside of the dojo. In addition to that, the Sobble would also evolve in the split um, to, uh, what is it called? Sobble, well, I don't, I forget, Dribble? Is it Dribble or something like that? I can't remember. Uh, which obviously we don't have to deal with. And we would also have to teach a move, uh, which we also don't have to do here. Um, so the pattern is the same for all three Slowpokes. We're going to use Nasty Plot once and we're going to use Flamethrower probably twice, unless it's once and we get lucky with a crit. But it's probably going to be twice. Um, this slowpoke was really cooperative, which is great. Um, but the moves that you're going to see from in any of the slowpokes are going to be yawn, which yawn is a move that puts you to sleep after the second turn since you used it. Um, so you can see why that would be annoying to get if the first move the slowpoke is yawn. Uh, disable, uh, which can be problematic if it's going to be on our second uh, flamethrower because disable will disable the last move that you used. So if I use flamethrower, then it used disable. It's going to disable my flamethrower and cause me some problems. Um, and then the other two moves are confusion and acid, which are damage type moves, but also could poison or confuse us. So these slow poke fights can be a little wild, uh, just depending. Uh, disable first turn is great because we didn't use a move yet, so that's good. Even if it uses disable now, um, that's also fine because it would disable nasty plot and we don't need to use nasty plot for this fight anymore. This this one also cooperated. Can't complain. These fast poke fights are going fast. They know the meaning of speed. 
All right, so that's two down. We're gonna watch out for that Scraggy that's just chilling there. And uh, we're gonna make our way down to the third one here. Keep an eye on that Drapion. That Drapion's gonna be coming in use here in a little bit. All right, here we go. Now it looks like if I had moved faster, I could have caught that cycle, but you never can. It spawns there and you just have to go, go around in a circle. All right, third and final Slowpoke. Let's hope for a very cooperative move set here. All right, so nasty plot. Ah, Yawn turn one is annoying. We're gonna have to use a uh, Awakening at some point, unless we get a crit here. Disable is fine though. Nope, we're gonna have to use an Awakening. Oop, nope, I forgot we only had two items there. Sometimes I'll, I'll pick up antidotes there as well. All right, so annoying. We had to take an extra turn, but you know, the other two fights are really good, so I really can't complain that much. So that is the slow pokes down, which is great. Nice and fast. Um, now, that Drapion, I said it was going to come in handy later, and that is because we're going to Death Warp on that Drapion, because when we die, we go back to the Dojo, which is where we need to head anyway. Um, we're going to hope that the Drapion uses Bite, because that would be a move that takes us out in one shot. We don't want to see things like Bug Bite, which does, which does just a little bit of damage. Um, so hopefully we get some fast moves here. Venoshock, I think, is good, actually. Eh, not that good. We did have relatively high health. We didn't take a lot of damage, so I, I can't complain that much on a two shot. Um, but that's a death warp. Now we have the Bulbasaur versus Squirtle at bid war unofficial ending. Now, do we happen to get any other donations to help snag this either way? No one has sniped, so it's going to be Team Bulba. Team Bulba. OK, you know, Squirtle Squad let me down a little bit there, but it's OK. I got my Squirtle Squad right here. Got it right here, so I can't complain. Um, so we're going to be picking Bulbasaur. Um, it does not matter what you pick at all. Um, they are the same amount of time. They don't affect the run really that much. Um, so, you know, it's not like one, one is faster over the other or anything like that. And we do still get to see them both. Um, so they're both going to pop out here and all of their cute and glory. And yeah, we get a we get a nifty little prize of getting to choose one uh, as the uh, we're the only ones to uh, complete the challenge. Now this is right up my alley. These are my two favorites. <laughs> mm. See, interestingly enough, I actually of my of the Gen One starters, I think Charmander is my favorite. So I don't even get a choice. I don't I don't have a horse in the race rather. Um, but I again, like I said, I love Gen One. So all three of these starters are just really solid to me. I really can't complain. All right, Team Bulba. But it's okay. One thing that I do love about this game, because as somebody who's played Pokemon games since they've been around, there's always a twinge of sadness, right? Because you, you pick one starter Pokemon, your rival picks another starter Pokemon, and then there's just one left on the table the whole game, right? And you're just like, oh, that poor neglected Pokemon. You feel bad for it. But any time in this game where you have a choice of Pokemon, they always make sure that the other Pokemon there has a home of some sort. So, like, for example, when we picked our starters, you know, we picked one rival picked one leon gets the third one so that one it has a home now between bulbasaur and squirtle um uh, squirtle still has a home with the uh, mustard's wife there so again can't complain too much um they all have homes so i don't feel as bad all right so we're going to deposit bulbasaur for now don't worry we will see bulbasaur uh one more time and we're going to equip a pekka berry uh, for right now as well um a little bit of exposition as well. We did not mention, uh, we haven't talked about yet what challenge two is gonna be. So challenge two is we have to go find mushrooms for, to make a uh, max soup. And the mushrooms we're finding are called max mushrooms. Now these are very interesting items. Um, obviously they make a delicious soup. Um, and when Pokemon eat them outside of battle, it helps create increase their like Dynamax potential. Um, but in addition to that, they actually have a very interesting in-game effect which is that if you use uh, in fight in battle effect, I should say, if you use a max mushroom in a battle, 
they are very overpowered because they boost every stat by one. So, uh, you know, for example, when we use nasty plot, we're boosting our special attack only by one. But it's like if I used a nasty plot one for one turn, but it boosted everything instead of just special attack. So it's really, really good. Um, and um, we're actually going to use max mushrooms a couple times for the actual speed run. Um, so that's pretty cool as well. Um, first, we need to go over to the cave where the mushrooms are. So we have to venture through this forest to get through the cave. We're going to take a little bit of a detour, pick up this item, which is a hyper potion, which you can infer why that might be useful, I'm sure. And then again, we're just trying to walk through the grass here and avoid wild encounters as much as possible. There's that Pikachu that you were looking for in Gen 1. Um, we just passed by it. And uh, we're going to walk in Viridian Forest, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're uh, we're a long way from Viridian Forest, but you can still find some Pikachu. Don't worry. Um, it's a Pokemon game. You know, it's going to have some Pikachu involved. Um, that cave way off in the distance there. That's where we're headed. Um, we're going to make another tiny little pit stop as well. Um, which is just next to that tree. You might have seen it as I was around in the corner there. There's another item ball, and that item is uh, Moo Moo Milk. Uh, shout out to Zelda fans, but also is a Pokemon item um, that uh, heals us as well. So there's another healing item that might come into play later on. Um, we're going to head into the cave here. Um, we're going to see some mushrooms pretty quickly. We're going to grab the mushrooms. Clara um, is going to have been following us this whole time, and then we're going to fight Clara for the second time. And Clara's second fight is the easiest of all three. Um, we actually will probably have to stall to take more damage. That's how easy it is. Uh, we, we actually have to uh, take some extra damage as opposed to hoping we don't die or something like that. Um, and uh, yeah, so the reason being, of course, is that we want to be low health for after the fight because we're going to do another death warp so uh, the lower the health the better um so instead of ending with slow poke like she did the first time she's going to start with slow poke and the slow poke mass spans confusion so to counteract that up top we're going to use our safeguard um uh, which means that uh, for five turns we can't be confused so it's still going to spam confusion we're still going to take damage but uh we can't be confused uh when that happens so That's really good. Meanwhile, we're going to use a bunch of nasty plots to really buff up our special attack while this uh, slowpoke takes out our health. We'll probably have to do three of them unless we get crit. Um, nope, we're going to do another one. One more. Yeah, we want to be nice and low health wise here. And now we're going to flamethrower. Uh, everything for the win. And we're, our special attack is super buffed anyway. Um, so we're, we're going to one shot everything. The unfortunate side effect is that uh, we actually level up, I think, twice in this fight. So the eight health that we have that's so low is going to go up by a few because we're going to level up twice. So, you know, we, we still are going to have a little bit higher health than I would have hoped for a death warp, but you know, we take what we get around here. Um, last Pokemon is Whirlipede evolved version of the Vendipede, which is still a bug, which means we're still going to fry it to a crisp, you know, easy peasy. Um, so again, this fight is nothing. It's not a, And that's it. Boom goes the dynamite. Clara 2 is over. Only one more fight with Clara. Still have a little bit of text to get through. Still got to actually pick the mushrooms. And then for whatever reason, I always get lucky here. So after this, I'm going to turn to my left and hope that there's a Sandshrew there. It could be any variety of Pokemon, but I'm going to hope it's a Sandshrew. But for some reason, I always get a Sandshrew there. And this isn't a bit like it could be something else, but I always get a Sandshrew there. I don't know if it's luck or it's just highly likely or whatever the case may be. But the reason why I want it to be a Sandshrew, which is a ground type, which is obviously super effective against us, we would hope for something that's not rapid spin <laughs> uh, because rapid spin is a move that doesn't take us out in one shot. But luckily, 
Um, Sandshrew has a lot of attack based moves anyway. So regardless what he uses, we'll, we'll probably die in between one and three hits. Oops. I always hated Sandshrew because he kept doing sand attack and then you just couldn't do anything and you waste all your PP. Yeah, yeah I think funny enough that you mentioned that I think that Sandshrew does have sand attack. I think it's the only move it has that doesn't damage. But because we're just depending on dying on it anyway, it doesn't really matter if we get sand. Well, it matters if we get sand attacked a lot because we want to die. Uh, but in terms of like landing hits because the sand attack lowers your accuracy, it doesn't become a problem for us, luckily. Um, the speed run doesn't deal with accuracy too much at all. A little bit, but not much, um, which is great because accuracy so is annoying. That rapid spin that you wanted. Yeah, um, accuracy can be pretty annoying in Pokemon speedrunning as a whole. But luckily, don't have to worry about it too much in this one. Um, I would like to shout out, we throw back to the first challenge, right? Where we had to collect the pieces of the uniform because Claire was upset she didn't get one. She's not even wearing the uniform, first of all. So that's kind of rude. Um, second of all, no one else in the dojo was able to complete challenge two besides me. And then Clara came in late with her bunch of mushrooms. Um, Clara comes in and says, can we use my mushrooms for the soup instead of uh, ours as the player, which is great for us, which because that means the mushrooms that we picked, we actually get to keep. Um, and use as battle items. So they didn't go into the soup that we all just ate, which is uh, so weirdly enough, even though it's just lore and exposition, it actually does affect our speed tech a little bit. Um, so we're going to head over here. Uh, a little bit of cutscene with this kid and his Cramorant vacuum machine doesn't matter to us in the slightest in the speed run. Don't care. Don't care at all. And then we're going to head over here where Mustard is going to tell us about the third and final challenge, which is just a straight up battle between Clara and us. Um, now is a good time to get into what this Clara three fight is. So this Clara three fight is bad and it's bad for one reason only. The reason is, is the last Pokemon she uses is Slowbro. Now Slowbro in itself is not a problem. But the slow bro that she has has an ability called quick draw. Quick draw is an ability that regardless of speed, um, I think it's like a 30% chance if the, for the ability to activate, it will just allow slow bro to go first, which creates massive problems for us. Um, so because of that, I'm going to save before this fight um, because it saves time as opposed to dying, respawning in the dojo and rewalking out here. Saves us time, so we're gonna resave. All right, so we'll walk right up to her. Save. Cool. Now, the, why why does it matter if the slow, bo slow bro goes first? One, it's the last Pokemon, our health's gonna be a little bit lower. Two, when you're Dynamaxed, which we will be Dynamax for this fight, spoiler alert. When you're Dynamax and you use, say, a fire type move, when you use that fire type move, it will cause a drought after, which is great for us because drought will boost our fire type attacks. We're also gonna be using a lot of items and nasty plots and things like that to boost our special attack to get through this fight. If Slowbro gets to go first, Slowbro will always use, um, I forget the, Max Geyser is what it's called, which is a water-based move. That means Slowbro will use Max Geyser. It will cause the weather to change to rain, which not only takes away our drought, which debuffs us, it also makes it so that fire moves are weak because it's raining. So that's a problem. Um, also, Clara cheats this fight at the start by throwing poison spikes on the field, which is not fair, but that is why we equip the Pekka Berry because we will immediately heal off that poison, which is great. So we're gonna get poison, it's gonna heal off. Great. Um, now, first things first, we're going to safeguard because this um, Skroopy spams Poison Fang and we don't want to get poisoned. Second thing we're going to do, we're going to go into our bag. We're going to use our uh, one set of our max mushrooms, which again, boosts every stat we have. Cool. Great. Third thing we're going to do, we're going to uh, use a nasty plot. And then after this, we're going to have to heal, which is fine. We got we grabbed a bunch of healing items earlier, so we're actually going to use the hyper potion so we heal to full. Because a one, uh, regular potion would only heal us 20. Uh, I'm going to use Poison Hang again. And then we're going to use Nasty Plot one more time. So if you're keeping up, it's two Nasty Plots plus a Max Mushroom. So we are plus three at Special Attack now. Our Safeguard is vanished, but that's okay because we outspeed the Skroopy. So we're going to get to go first. 
boom goes the dynamite. Now, uh, next Pokemon she's going to throw out is a Galarian Weezing. Not a problem. We're actually going to Dynamax and just take it out. And then another Whirlipede will take it out while still Dynamaxed. And then the Dreadful Slowbro. Now, the good news is... Uh, one, we immediately win if Quick Draw doesn't happen. We're just going to win because that means we'll get to go first. We'll get to use our buffed up attack and it's great. It, two, if quick draw does happen there is still a chance that we can survive it's obviously going to be slower but there's still a chance that we can survive because our health is high right here um what will happen is slow bro will use max geyser i will use the max flare that i had planned i will then d-dynamax but because i was the last move to use in that turn the drought will return so it's only going to rain for a second and then we're going to turn it back to a drought then, assuming that the second turn happens and we don't get quick drawed again, then we will have a chance to land a fire blast on the Slowbro and kill it. Um, even from a D Dynamax position. So even if we do get quick drawed first turn, we still have a chance to win. But here we go. Come on, no quick draw. Yes, let's go. No quick draw. All of that hypothetical stuff where I was like, we might die. This is dangerous. Who knows what's going to happen? None of it's going to be a problem. We're just going to straight up kill this uh, Slowbro. Uh, let's go, let's go, let's go. So we get all this, we're all we're all dynamaxed. It's also really funny to me since we turn off battle animations, because obviously that's faster, that we get this giant fight and then we just go uh dink <laughs> and it's dead. And that's just how it goes. It's it's kinda we get the climax building to these, you know, Titans fighting and then you know, just kinda anticlimactic there. But we got through Clara 3. Last time we're going to fight Clara in this run, which is great. Great. So, now, you might be wondering, we completed the three challenges. Aren't we, like, through the story? And we almost are. But if you recall, this category is called Tower of Two Fists. Wherever the story goes from here is now that we've completed the three challenges, we are going to get the Secret Island Armor's I Secret armor of the island rather and i'll go ahead and spoil it now the secret armor of the island is a cub foo so we're going to get a cub foo that we can train and what we need to do is we need to train up this cub foo not only in level but we also need to train up its friendship with us and then we can take on one of two towers in the island so that we can complete the tower and then have cub foo evolve into urshifu depending on which tower you choose urshifu would evolve into uh, a fighting dark type or a fighting water type uh, this is where RNG can really take over uh, because the strategies we use for this cub foo are very interesting but first things first that we're going to do once we regain control is we're going to change the date in our switch clock so we're going to go into like our switch menu here and then we're actually going to save as well just in case we get a bad cub foo with bad into bad in terms of stats so all right so we're going to go over to our settings change our date and time to a specific date and time. All right, and then we're going to save. Great. Now uh, we're going to talk to Mustard and who's going to give us the Cub Foo. Now, when it comes to Cub Foo stats, we can actually technically run any kind of Cub Foo here. Um, the reason why it matters ever so slightly is because the most optimal strategy requires one stat to be good, which is speed. Now, the good news is Cub Fu is technically a legendary Pokemon, which means that every legendary Pokemon in this game is guaranteed to have three out of six of its stats be top IV, which means that, you know, the highest level stats. And the stat we're dependent on is speed. What we're gonna look for in this Cub Fu when we regain control is that it has at least 20 speed, preferably higher, like 21, 22, 23, 24 would be a lot better. But we can run with 20 speed. Um, if it has less than 20 speed, I am gonna go ahead and reset it because it, it would just be too unfortunate to run and we'd have to really change up our strategy, which may really waste time. It's actually faster just to try for another Cub Fu. The good news is though, that 20 speed is a very low threshold to hit. So more often than not, we get it. But let's see what we get here. Uh, yep, 
Great, so we have 22 speed, which means this is runnable. We're actually gonna deposit nine tails here and head out. Now, here is the massive, massive RNG portion of the run. What we do to train, uh, tra uh, to train Cub Fu fast and why we change the date is we are actually looking in these grass areas for one specific Pokemon, which is Blissey. We're looking to find Blisseys. We're looking to fight and defeat them because they are just big old fat sacks of, hit of experience points, rather. The downside to this and they only pop up in this foggy weather, which is why we change the date to when we do. The downside of this is that they are 2% spawn rate. So their spawn rate is super low. So this is why RNG really takes off here because we're gonna hope that we get um, early spawns. You know, if, and luckily enough, we actually got a pretty fast one. Not only did we get a fast one, this is actually the highest level Blissey you can get, which is actually kind of annoying to do for your first fight. We actually have a pretty strong chance to die here. Uh, depending on what what we get um i'm actually yeah we might die actually we, we just died i think yep that's fine so it doesn't really affect anything beyond being slow but the reason why you don't want it it can be fine if you get a high level blissey on the uh first one um if you can defeat it because then you, you get a, a nice uh nice boon there we would have leveled up considerably um but you know we die we just respawn in here and we just head back out uh, we would prefer, um, just for safety's sake, that it would be a little bit lower level so we can get by it. Um, is this a Chansey Evolve or is it a separate Pokemon? It's a Chansey Evolve, yes. Um, luckily enough, we pop outside and here's another Blissey. Again, this is a 2% spawn chance, so this is not too bad so far. Uh, next level 15, though. Uh, please don't do it to me again, Chansey. Uh, Blissey, rather. I don't, I don't need this. Uh, I don't need to die again. Luckily, it's just using Defense Curl, which is slow, but fine. Okay, let's see what damage this does. I'm going to assume that's fine. Okay, we're good, I believe. Oh, wait, no, we might not kill this turn. Let's see. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so just stop. Don't use Life Dew again. Don't kill me. Good. All right, we're all right. Cool. So again, we got another level 15. If we were gonna kill that, uh, the both level 15s, we actually be done now with with grinding. We'd be good. Um, but that's okay. Um, getting uh, one level 15 is really good. And as you can see, we were level 10. We defeated that level 15 Blissey. We are now level 16. Bumped up six levels with one Pokemon. So it was no joke when I said that these are big old fat sacks of hit points because we don't need to go up too much farther after this. Depending on the level of the Blissey, we might actually be good with just one more. Um, that we can kill and since we are level 16 none of the levels of blisses will scare us anymore the only thing that does scare me a little bit is that my health is so low but uh not i uh, i'm trying i'm i'm toying around with the idea in my head of healing um actually you know what? i'm gonna do it just to be safe because if we do get another uh blissey that's over level oh I, I forgot we leveled up a bunch though we would have been fine anyway whoops that's fine um just extra safe then um if we do get if we did get another blissey that was level 13 or higher it would have that echoed voice attack that would do some damage to us so but i forgot we had leveled up six levels and grabbed a bunch of extra hp there but you know whatever it's fine uh but now you're seeing why this can be considerably annoying because these blisseys just might not spawn um oh there's one the other downside too is that they can run away like this um, and depending on where they're facing, if they start running towards a wall and they hit the wall, they'll despawn. Um, so that can that can be uh, a relatively big problem as well. Level 10. Um, let me see where we're at after this. We might have to take another one. Let's see. Hmm. Hmm. I'm thinking. This is this isn't. Uh, it's like an on the fence predicament here i i'll take one or two more rounds if it basically doesn't pop up we're gonna try and uh move on without it i think we would be okay i think we would be okay but i would feel better if it just another one popped up that would be make me feel a little bit better let's do a couple more passes around and then we'll just move on so we don't waste a lot of extra time 
The next um, most experience that we could get from wild Pokemon here is the Jigglypuffs, but they get, you know, it's like one tenth of the experience that you can get from a, a Blissey. So it really doesn't even compare. Um, all right, we will do one more pass around, and then if not, we will just move on with what we got, I believe. This is a heavy reset point in, in a PB attempt. It would be, yeah, it would be. Um, especially considering, like, if 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 you're trying to grind this for world record, uh, world record has a really fast section of this as well. Um, so you know, it, it becomes a relatively heavy reset point depending on you know what your time is leading up to this as well. Um, yeah, I'm gonna opt just to be. We're in a marathon and things are going okay so far for right now. So I'm gonna opt to try and find one more just to play things really close to the chest. I think I would be fine um, if I used my rare candy instead and just moved on. But I just am a little nervous about it, and I'd rather not die a bunch of times if I can avoid it. But yeah, two percent. This is what two percent looks like. Though I mean, we have found three blissies. I can't really complain that much. There's one. But yeah, for example, if I had gotten to that wall before I got to it, um, it would have despawned, which would be unfortunate. Um, three Blissey, by the way, three Blisseys in a PB attempt is actually normal. Um, it's probably, uh, de depending on the levels of the Blisseys, it's probably most common. Uh, two is ideal, um, but you'd ha it's really dependent on the levels of the Blisseys you get. Like, I got a level 15, which is really good. If I had gotten a level like 13 or even a level 12, maybe then we would have been golden uh but because it was level 10 we just didn't get enough experience um so three blissies is pretty common um but two blissies would be optimal uh, but we're good on blissies we're trained up uh with our cub where we need to be so this is fine now now that we are trained up physically we do need to train up another stat of cub foos which is actually a hidden stat friendship um the, what Mustard is looking for before we are able to take on one of the two towers is that we have, me and Kubfu have bonded. So the game introduces something for us to bond easily as opposed to, you know, just using Pokemon camp or items or whatever it is, the case may be to increase our friendship, which is going to visit any of these dojo uh, representatives here and then just staring at the scene around you and just <laughs> bonding over what you're seeing. Um, right now we're looking in a cave, which I guess is kind of cool, but like, I don't know. I don't look at that cave and be like, wow, I'm glad we had this moment to share together <laughs> personally. Um, but you know, if it works for cub food, it works for us. Um, we need to hit three of these points to get a high enough friendship level. Um, so we are going to hit two more. Um, they are relatively kind of far away. So we do have some movement. Um, Manix, do we happen to have any plugs, anything we'd like to share with the crowd while we just move on over to the second point? Uh, sure, I can share some of the some of the incentives that we have remaining for the day. There's no current new to so, but uh, the next coming one will be the new Ghostbusters 2. Pick a character. Currently, Egon is winning at $15, but uh, Peter, Winston, and Louie are all at $10, and Ray is at $11, so I... I feel I feel a snipe there. I feel one. Uh, we got River City Girls a little bit later to pick a character. Misako is currently winning at two hundred and seventy dollars. Twenty dollars over Kyogo, so that also could swing anyway. And uh, just the, near the end of the marathon, the Great Circus Mystery starring Mickey and Minnie. If you want to pick Mickey, you're short twenty six dollars. So make sure you uh, swing that one around too if you want to see Mickey. All right, yeah, get those remaining. All right, yeah, get get your donations in. All of those are within reach. So like, and they're all pretty cool games. So like, if you want to see something particular, get your donations in and just snag that incentive that you want to see met. Uh, and not only does your money go to a good cause, you just get to frame the game the way you want to. So who who wouldn't want to do that? Um. Great. So we're actually almost at the second friendship point, which coincidentally is right next to one of the two towers. Um. So uh, you keep you remember that this tower is here, so we know when we have to potentially return to it. Um, I'll give Cub Food this one. This is kind of nice scenery. You got your hills, you got your ocean, you know, kind of a higher viewpoint. 
not too bad we have one more viewpoint that we're gonna bond over and i'm just gonna spoil it for you ahead of time it is atrocious like you're gonna look at the scene and you're gonna say how can anybody think that this is beautiful how can anyone bond over this it's just so ugly so just get ready for that um the third point by the way is we're actually going to go into the same cave that we fought clara the second time in where we got our mushrooms before if you remember uh we're gonna go in that safe cave but we're gonna actually travel all the way through it and out the other side um and we're gonna hit our third friendship checkpoint there but we're also gonna grab um a few key items that we're going to utilize through the end game run of this um we're actually yeah we're so i mean we're, we're getting towards the end i'm not saying we're like you know time's coming up in a minute or anything like that but we're getting towards the end we're in like the um we're getting about to the climax of the run basically so here's the third checkpoint now just take a look at this would you bond over this would i what <laughs> would, would you would you bond over this like is anything about what the scenery that we're seeing beautiful no it's just desert, cloudy, foggy, gross desert. No, no one would want to see that. I don't know how we have just increased our friendship level, but here we are. All right. Um, um, so, Taurus is one of my favorites. So to me, there's a form of bonding. <laughs> well, yeah, Tauros is great. Yeah, but the scenery, it's the scenery that's not so great. So um, in addition to bonding over this questionable scenery, of course, we're going to grab two items that are very important the first one we already grabbed which is rocky helmet uh, rocky helmet is an item when a, your pokemon is equipped to it um, whenever a physical move is done to you it will damage your opponent as well and that's going to be very important for one key fight later and we also grab a tr for reversal which i'll explain a little bit more later but for now we are going to um we're gonna we're gonna grab our bulbasaur um the one one that we got some donations in for and we're gonna we're gonna have that out for with us for a second here and i think this bulbasaur can take on this ripe here you're pretty easy i think it's gonna be fine okay so we're just gonna take it on we're level five right here is level 50 i'm not worried oh shoot i guess i should be worried <laughs> um in reality of course i'm not fooling anybody this is planned it's a death warp the reason why we swapped to bulbasaur though instead of just doing it with cub food because you might be wondering oh well cub food would heal anyway what's the problem the reason why i choose to do that and i do this a lot oops i do this a lot in marathon settings especially is that um because fainting effects our friendship level with our Pokemon. So especially because I fainted once with uh, Cub Fu already, I was a little bit nervous about our friendship level and I did not want to risk it by then fainting Cub Fu again and not having enough friendship to satisfy uh, Mustard here. If that were the case, if I did do that and my friendship level wasn't high enough since we don't have any more checkpoints, what I would then do is I would use the Pokemon camp and play with toys with uh, with Cub Fu in the meantime. Uh, that's what I would do. Um, but we luckily we don't have to do that, so that's great. Um, so we have satisfied mu uh, Mustard's friendship level requirement. He then tells us we have two towers that you can take Cub Fu to and uh, take on the towers. Tower of Water, Tower of Darkness. We are going to choose the Tower of Darkness. One, it's faster, so we're speedrunning. But two, even if we wanted to choose the Tower of Waters, we actually can't because the Tower of Waters is surrounded by water. And as I mentioned at the very top of this run, the, one of the unique challenges that a DLC run early causes is that we don't have the ability to surf. So I can't even get in the tower if I wanted to. Um, but it's fine because the Darkness Tower is faster anyway. So it worked out. Um, so all we're going to do is we're going to walk on over to the tower. And what happens inside the tower is... Um, five trainers that we're going to fight luckily they all have one pokemon however if i were to lose to any trainer we go to back to the bottom of the tower and have to start over so in preparation i'm actually going to take a menu um we're going to go over here and i'm going to teach reversal all right all right now reversal if you're unfamiliar with the, what reversal does is uh reversal is a fighting based move that um the lower your health is the more damage you do and this is quintessential to the strategy that i'm going to showcase so um what we're going to co combine is kung fu 
um, in addition to just learning reversal with that TR, also knows a move called Endure. So, because a lot of the Pokemon that we're about to fight are higher level than us, we're gonna we're gonna go in starting at level 18. We're gonna level up once or twice in 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 the actual tower. But um, the last Pokemon we fight is level 30, so they they're higher level than us. To circumvent this. We are going to use combination endure, which is a move that if you're hit and you are about to faint, you will survive with one hit point instead. Then because we outspeed pretty much everything in the tower, at least when relevant to using this combination, we will then get to use reversal, which at, when we're at one health is going to deal maximum damage. So you can kind of see the strategies that we're going to implement here. It's very creative. One of the reasons why I love Pokemon speedrunning so much is because we find these really crafty and creative solutions to hard problems. Um, and, and I think I think it's just really neat, really neat. So uh, here's a darkness tower. Um, just as, as I mentioned as well, um, the tower you choose also de uh, will determine the type of Urshifu that your Kupfu will evolve into at the end. Um, so we're going to get a fighting... Oops. Do I have to do all that talking again? Yep, I hit B by accident when it, when it was yes or no. Uh, so uh, the, depending on the type of... Uh, Power we choose is what type of Urshifu gets. Now it doesn't matter. We just have to get Urshifu. It doesn't. We don't have to do anything with Urshifu once we're done. We just have to get it. Um, so it doesn't particularly matter what it evolves into. But if you're playing casually and you're interested in what the difference is beyond who you fight, that's one of the differences. So trainer one sends out a Zoroa. The Zoroa is pretty much a non-factor. Uh, we're gonna just use Rock Smash on it twice. Pretty easy, and we actually don't mind. So Fury Swipes is annoying because it's a long move, uh, but we actually don't mind taking damage here quite uh, quite a bit because um, we're going to utilize the indoor reversal strategy on trainer two coming up. Um, and if our health is too high, we're actually gonna have to stall a turn, uh, which our health is too high, so we're gonna have to stall a turn. Um, but you know, that's one trainer down, level up to 19, easy peasy. Um, so, Zoro and trainer one. Trainer two has a Scraggy. And like I said, our health is a little high. We're going to have to do a little bit of a stall here. So instead of just using Endure and then Reversal, because the Scraggy couldn't take us out in one shot if it wanted to, we're going to uh, use Leer. Uh, which is also handy because Leer lowers, uh, lowers the defense, so it makes it so we're going to do a little extra damage. Um, and then Endure, and then Reversal. Alright, so stall turn while Scraggy hits us once. Great. Then we're going to use Endure. Great, so you brought down to one health, just as planned. Reversal. Take it from full to empty. Boom shakalaka. Great. And because we didn't level up here, that means we're going to go into trainer three and our health is already at one. So we don't even have to use reversal because we outspeed everything. We can, uh, I'm sorry, we don't even have to use endure. Because we outspeed everything, we can just straight up reversal uh, for the win. Which is great news. Now, there is, I will say, because I didn't pay strong attention to what my attack stat is, there is a small chance that I'll use reversal here and I won't do enough damage. <laughs> so we would just die. But luckily, um, it's not too much. It's a low chance for one and two. Even if I did die, we would just bop back to the bottom of the tower. We didn't. It's not like we got crazy far into it anyway. But luckily, again, not a problem. We defeat NK, no worries. So if you're keeping count, that's three trainers down already. We only have two more to go. Um, this next trainer, we actually have to do a little bit of prep for. So we're actually going to go into our bag and you're just going to use one potion. Because no matter what, oops, even if our speed stat was at its highest, uh, there we go. Um, this uh, trainer who has a Crocorock, would, it would outspeed us. Uh, Crocorock is a pretty high speed Pokemon. So um, that's fine, though, because we're still going to use reversal on turn one. And um, hopefully we're going to get a damaging move from Croc Rock on turn one because that would be fastest. Croc Rock also does like to use Protect, uh, which just delays the inevitable. Yeah, there you go. Uses Protect, uh, which means that <laughs> Reversal won't work, which is just so it's like we both wasted a turn. Um, there we go. There's some damage um, and that is low enough health that we can just one shot this Croc Rock. Easy peasy.
Great. So we're at level 20 and we only have one more fight to go. Um, don't worry though, time doesn't end after this fight. We have a little bit of a cutscene after. Um, but the fight that's at the end is in, with none other than Mustard himself. I told you he'd be coming back. Um, but before we even fight Mustard, we do have to do some uh, menu prep. So first, we're gonna go into our bag. We're gonna heal the full. Oops, I exited, exited my bag. Second thing we're gonna do is we're gonna equip that Rocky helmet that we did before. And third thing we're gonna do is save because even if things go, like even if I execute properly here, there's still a chance we could die on mustard. So what we're gonna, the plan here is, um, mustard is gonna come at us. First of all, before I even get to the plan, I wanna shout this out because he's about to do a transformation mustard here. Check this out. So you got your regular mustard. Remember droopy eyebrows. Now we got the super saiyan eyebrows that are flying up. <laughs> um, second of all, what's the Pokemon he's going to use? Cub Fu. So get your Spider-Man memes ready. You know, Spider-Man's pointing at each other. All right, here's the strat. So here's what we're going to do. Turn one, we're going to use Max Mushrooms. Um, ideally, the Cub Fu will deal some damage to us. That's probably what will happen. So turn one, we're going to use Max Mushrooms to buff ourselves. Um, first things first, this Cub Fu crits, we're dead. So there's nothing we can do about it. Um, so obviously no crit um, because we equip the Rocky helmet. It does damage to us. Oops, not back. I always do this. All right. Now if we're going to use Endure. Now here's where I can go south. Um, Kung Fu has four, three fighting moves and one non fighting move, uh, which that move is focus energy. Um, if it had used focus energy there when I used uh, Endure, we would be dead because then Endure would fail, obviously, and you can't use Endure back to back successfully. It'll just fail. Luckily, we got a damaging move. We then use Reversal. We had done enough damage between the two hits with the Rocky Helmet plus our Reversal to, uh, to win the fight. So that's actually all the fights. Time is coming up pretty soon. You have about two minutes, actually, a little less than two minutes. We have the final cutscene and the evolution of Cub Fu to Urshifu. But um, otherwise, besides a little bit of bad Blissey RNG and a few, like, you know, menuing mistakes and things like that. Uh, this run was pretty solid. I'm pretty happy with it. Um, I'll go ahead, you know, just to keep us on track and everything, I'll go ahead and start doing my shout outs and plugs and stuff now, just so we can uh, get a move on with the marathon and stay on schedule and all that. Um, so first of all, thank you to uh, Streiser, the entire crew behind this game over cancer events. Uh, this is the second time I've gotten to run in such an event. And um, I'm always just so honored. Um, my mother uh, has been diagnosed with cancer two separate times in her life. The second time had a high likelihood that she would pass away. But I'm incredibly grateful to say that she was able to make it through. Um, so causes that support cancer research, cancer prevention, anything that involves um, helping cancer patients. I'm always very passionate to support. So thank you for having me and thank you for uh, everyone who's donated towards uh, towards this cause. Um, if you are interested in Pokemon speedrunning or interested in this run in particular, uh, come on by uh, speedrun.com slash whatever Pokemon game you want to run. Um, this is actually in the category extensions of Sword and Shield. So if you don't see it on the main category board, that's why. Um, but you can also join our discords. Um, and uh, we'll be happy to give you some tips. And there's also all kinds of guides and stuff on there. Um, and if you like Pokemon speedruns or speedruns of other kinds, such as, you know, Bug Snacks is another game I'm pretty known for. Grand Fandango, some another game that I run quite often. Other Pokemon games as well. Come on by twitch.tv slash conception2. I'll be glad to have you. We chill, we hang out, we have a good time. So feel free to swing on by. Time is coming up in just a few seconds. And time. GG. Thank you so much. Um, so yeah, that's it for me. Again, thank you so much for having me. Check out our, our Urshifu here that you know taller than us and everything. Um, but yeah, thank you for having me. Hope you all enjoyed the run. Um, and yeah, just reach out to me if y'all have questions or just want to talk about speedrunning. Come on by. Thanks for sharing a part of your uh, personal story too. I think we're all affected by cancer one way or another. So it was cool to hear a little bit about uh, how that has affected G and I also I want to rip a page of Miva's book here saying that your commentary was absolutely stellar just entertaining the whole way but not too much that 
you know, you would lose somebody who doesn't know too much. Like, I don't know anything, and I, I, I thoroughly enjoyed this, and I could follow you, so I really appreciated the type of commentary that you can tell that you've put effort in. So, shoutouts to you. Well, thank you very much to, to who said that in chat, as well as you, Manix. That means a lot to me. Um, so thank you very much for that. Yeah, no problem. That was from Mivu, Mivu24. Thank you, Mivu. That was very kind of you to say. Really appreciate it. Everybody, don't go anywhere. We're going to take a trip to Blight Town. Dark Souls Room Masters is coming up. Let's listen to some tunes and we'll be right back.